if we have x plus 1, and we're multiplying it times x plus 4, um, how do you do that? This is multiplying two binomials together. How do you, how do, you do that? Well, we learned about FOIL, F-O-I-L, right? So we said we do the first terms multiplied together, then the outside terms multiplied together, then the inside terms, then the last terms. So if you were actually going to do this, it would be the first two terms. x times x would give you x squared, right? The outside terms, x times 4, is going to give you 4x, like this. The inside terms, 1 times x, would give you x. And the last terms, 1 times 4, would give you 4. We've learned this before. And then we start to collect like terms. So we have 4x plus x. Those are like terms. So this would come out to be x squared plus 5x plus 4. This is stuff we've done before uh, down, you know, back in the past. So I want to go ahead and just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. You should know this. If you don't have any idea what I'm talking about, if you don't know why we multiply it this way to get this answer, then you need to back up the truck and go back to multiplying binomials together. Because in this section, we're going to be going backwards. So you already know how to take these and multiply them to get this. What we're going to be doing by factoring is we're going to be giving you a trinomial. So I might give you, for instance, I might say factor the following. Factor the following trinomial. x squared plus 5, x plus 4. And I might say factor that. Right Now, at first glance, if I didn't really tell you that what we're doing is going backwards here, then you might look at this and try to find common something common to each of these. So I have an x squared, I have 5x, and I have a 4. I don't have anything common to all three of those terms to like pull outside of the parentheses. But anytime you see a trinomial like this, where you have an x squared uh, plus some term with x plus some number, it's what we call of the form x squared, see? The first term is x squared, the middle term is some number b times x, in this case it's 5x, and then the third number is a constant c. So this is exactly of this form. So every single one of these problems is going to look exactly like, uh, exactly like this form. It's going, to be some, it's going to be x squared plus a number times x plus a number. And what we want to do is we want to factor it into two binomials. So we're going to start with the trinomial like this, and we're going to end up with two binomials. Now, of course, you have the answer here. Of course you have the answer, um, but we're going to pretend that you don't have the answer for a second. Now the way you handle it is when you're given a trinomial like this, uh, you put an equal sign, and then you have to write your two sets of parentheses. You know that if this thing is factorable, and sometimes it's not, but you assume that it's factorable, especially when you're first learning, then you're going to have two sets of parentheses. And inside of here you're going to have a binomial something plus something and here you, inside of here you're going to have a binomial something plus something. So what you need to do is use your knowledge of FOIL, F-O-I-L, to go backwards. So we need to figure out what goes here. Now the first term is x squared, right? So we know that this term, whatever it is, the first term on this side, times this first term, we multiply them together when we do FOIL and that has to equal x squared the first term in the answer. The only thing that really works there is x times x. So we just put an x here times x here. So you have to be thinking about FOIL. When we go and multiply this thing back in the end of the day, x times x would give us x squared. Okay? Now the next thing you need to do is actually turn your attention, skip over this middle term, turn your attention to the last thing. All right. You need to figure out something times something that would give you 4. And that number is going to go here times here. So something times something to give us 4. We have to figure out, and they have a couple choices. 1 times 4 could equal 4. So I could, have put, I could put a 1 here times 4 could equal 4. I could also put 2 times 2 to give me 4. And let's say I don't really have any idea what it is. Those are the only things I can think of that are going to multiply together to give us 4. So let's just for a second choose 2 times 2. 2 times 2, right? Now we know that this number here is a positive 4, so it, 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 we need to, it can only be positive 2 times positive 2 or negative 2 times negative 2, all right? So for now, just since we're learning, let's just put positive 2 times positive 2. Now let's check our work and see if we got the right answer. If we do FOIL on this, then what we have is x times x is going to give you x squared, the outside terms, x times 2, would give me 2x. The inside terms would give me 2 times x. 
And the last term, 2 times 2, would give me 4. And I see I have 2x plus 2x, so I can combine that to x squared plus 4x plus 4. The whole point is to start from the trinomial and split it up into two binomials. We call that factoring. And at the end of the day, when you cross multiply these back, you should get what you started with. But we didn't. We actually got x squared plus 4x plus 4. So we had the first term correct. We had the last term correct. And the middle term wasn't right. And what that means is that all of this is wrong. All right, that's not the right binomial. So we start over again. So let's start over again. So um, let me go ahead and write uh, the whole thing again. x squared plus 5x plus 4. So let's go ahead and do the whole thing again. We have to put two sets of parentheses down. There's really only one choice for the first terms because only two things, you know, the, the only thing that multiplies together to give you x squared uh, is going to be x times x. I suppose you could do 1 times x squared, but it... Uh, that never really is what you're going to be doing. You're always going to be doing x times x. So just put those there, and you will get x squared for your first terms. Now we turn our attention to the last thing. What times what gives us 4? We already tried 2 times 2. That didn't work because the inside terms times the outside terms did not add up to the correct thing. So we need to put something else. Let's try 1 times 4. And let's put pluses here. And let's see if this works. And of course you do know it works because it's there. So x times x gives us x squared. The outside terms, x times 4 gives us 4x. The inside terms, 1 times x gives you x. And the outside terms, 1 times 4 gives you 4. And then you get x squared plus 5x plus 4. That's correct. So this is actually the correct answer. This is the factored form, x plus 1 times x plus 4. So when we say factor a trinomial of this form, what you're trying to do is come up with two binomials like this, such that when you multiply them together, you get what you started with. The recipe is going to be the same for all of them, and we're going to do a lot of these problems. The recipe is going to be exactly the same. We are going to first write down um, this, the first terms that are going to multiply this to get this, and then we have to write the last terms together that multiply to give us this. But the problem is you have lots of choices for the last terms. You need to make sure that what you write down also satisfies the middle term, so that the inside terms multiplied plus the outside terms multiplied give you what you have in there. Okay, And for these, these, uh, these lessons here, we're going to always have the recipe where it's x squared plus something times x plus a number c, and c is always going to be positive for every one of these problems. All right, So let's go ahead and do another one. We'll do it right over here. And we'll just do some examples and get some practice. Let's say we have r squared minus 6r plus 8. We want to factor that. So the first thing you do is you know it's always going to be equal to two sets of parentheses. You're going to have a binomial in each one. The very first thing you do is you say, well, I have r squared. So the first terms multiplied together has to be r times r. r times r. So you're basically halfway home. Then you go off and look and say, well, what times what gives me 8? And you're going to have to make some choices here. You're going to have to choose a few different things before you, you get on the right answer. So 2 times 4 is equal to 8. 1 times 8 is equal to 8. All right, so let's go ahead and just for the sake of argument, let's put 1 times 8. Let's say that's the first thing that you have. Now, 1 times 8 does equal 8, but the problem is the inside terms, 1 times r, that gives me r, this term, Okay, the inside term gives us r, the outside term gives us 8r. So I need to figure out a way to make 6r out of that. There's really no way to do it, because 8 plus 1 gives me 9, and if I subtract 8 minus 1, I just get 7. So there's really no way to get 6r whenever I have these two numbers here. So I'm kind of going intentionally and leading you down the wrong path a few times, because you're going to do that whenever you start doing these yourself. So we start again. We write another set of parentheses, r and r stay the same. What times what gives me 8? 2 times 4, right? So put a 2 here and put a 4 here. Now I have to start thinking, okay? 2 times 4 does give us 8. I want a positive 8, okay? So the only way I can do that is if it's positive 2 times positive 2, or negative 2 times, I'm sorry, positive 2 times positive 4, or if it's a negative 2 times negative 4. So I can either have a plus here and here, or I can have a minus here and a minus here. So let's look at both cases. 
if I were to put plus here and plus here, I would get 8. But then I would have from the inside terms 2r, and then from the outside terms I would have 4r. All right? And uh, 2 plus 4, 2 plus 4 gives you 6. But notice that I don't have 6 up here. I have negative 6. So if I put a plus here and a plus here, everything's going to be right except I'm going to have a positive 6r when I try to cross multiply the answer out. So that means the only way that I can make these work is if I put a negative sign in both positions. And we need to make sure that you understand. This is the correct answer. We need to make sure you understand why it's the correct answer. Because r times r is going to give you r squared. Right? The outside terms, r times negative 4, is going to give you negative 4r. The inside terms, negative 2 times r is going to give you negative 2r. So put it as minus 2r. And the last term is negative 2 times negative 4 is going to give you positive 8. Now we can collect the interior two terms here. This is negative 4 and negative 2r. So we can make that r squared minus uh, 6r plus 8. And that checks out. That's what it should be. If I were to put plus signs here, what do you think is going to happen? Well, if I put plus here and plus here, the r squared is going to be the same. Positive 2 times positive 4, the 8 would be the same. But if I had a plus here and a plus here, I would have positive 2r and positive 4r, which would give me positive 6r. So that would be wrong. So they have to be negatives, both negatives. So I'm going to conclude this section. We're going to go on to the next lesson. We're going to work many, many more of these. So don't stress out too much if you don't feel like you're an expert. But you're following the same recipe every time. You write down the first terms first to give you this, and then you write down numbers that multiply together to give you this, and you have to choose the signs properly to give you the middle term. And you can always check your answer, always, because when you cross multiply it, it should always come back to what you started with. Make sure you can do these. Follow me on to the next section. We'll continue the skill in algebra. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.